Good morning, Connections. We're making it through. Week isn't unfolding as we planned, but nevertheless, God is there because we are called to trust him. That's what faith is. Not just trust him in this moment, not just trust him with this latest trouble, but trust him for a lifetime. And that's hard. We've, we've trusted others for, for shorter amount of times, and it works out for, for a moment, but sustaining trust between two people, that's a challenge, and that takes God. Speaking of our interactions with one another, that's where we land today. The danger of gaining wisdom from the world is we become pretty adept at lying, faking sincerity, and learning what to say to get what we want. And that gives us a false sense of confidence that we can navigate through this world. Um, most people, well, you know, some people figure us out, but enough folks are, buy our lies that we are encouraged to continue in those ways. We get great satisfaction out of getting over on, on other people. It's the broken world we live in. It's the culture that is all around us. It, it, you know, we are inundated with messages from, from everybody pushing stuff on us. Advertising is based on learning what to say and what to show to elicit the response that the company is looking for, to get you to buy their stuff. It's not any different than their competitor's stuff, but if they add a little sizzle, then you will think that you are buying the best. It's all around us. One of the most refreshing things that I came across in the this last month is um, on Crawfordville Highway, there's uh, guys that fly signs on the medians. One day, I think we were probably coming home from, from church and guys holding out a sign that says, why lie? I want beer. Now, that kind of clever messaging might play with, you know, folks that, you know, heading home from, from the beach and, oh, here, we'll just give them beer. But it also was a recognition that he was cutting through all of the insincerity, all the lies and just freely sharing. So it was refreshing. It was, you know, also a little heart wrenching, but imagine if, if other advertisers would take the same tech. The reason I bring all of that up is that you could fool the world and you could become very adept at fooling your neighbors. You can become very adept at lying and, and, get a master's in and getting over on folks, but it's not really getting you where you want to be. In your heart of hearts, you know this, you go home feeling, you know, empty, feeling that there's more, but you also need to know that you're not fooling the one that truly you have to pass muster with. You're not fooling God. God knows it all. And so today's devotional is, is centered on stop playing because the one that you have to, to, to stand up with, the one that you have to stand before, the one that's going to judge you, isn't fooled by all your antics. The author of Hebrews wants to make sure that, that we recognize first and foremost that in order to live out a life of faith, you got to stop lying to others. You got to stop lying to yourself and truly, sincerely choose God, not just go through the motions. Hebrews 4.12 says this, For the word of God is alive and powerful 
It is sharper than the sharpest two-edged sword, cutting between soul and spirit, between joint and marrow. It exposes our innermost thoughts and desires. Nothing in all creation is hidden from God. Everything is naked and exposed before his eyes, and he is the one to whom we are accountable. We talked yesterday of the, the healthy nature of relationships within the body of Christ, that we hold each other accountable, that we are called to, to help folks uh, stand up against temptation and and navigate this narrow path. As we hold each other accountable, we are the hands and feet of God. We are, are his instrument that he is using to hold us accountable. But everyone who has been born into this world will be held accountable to God as well. He is the final say in how well we have navigated our lives. And it is displayed here in Hebrews in such a graphic way and in, in such graphic language of, of picturing this sword, you know, slicing open and exposing everything that's within us in order to grab our attention, in order to, to, <laughs> to truly speak the message, stop messing around with God. You may fool the world, but you're not fooling God. Continuing in 14, so then, since we have a great high priest who has entered heaven, Jesus, the Son of God, let us hold firmly to what we believe. This high priest of ours understands our weaknesses, for he faced all of the same testing we do, yet he did not sin. One of the strengths of NAAA, Celebrate Recovery, all of those um, you know, support groups is the that they have sponsors, someone who is ahead in their recovery efforts, somebody who has successfully navigated those difficult waters. Now they're successful because those programs are successful because you have someone to counsel you in the struggle. They understand the struggle better than anyone else understands the struggle. But they're also successful because they call you out on all your excuses and all your lies and because they've been there. Those programs are based off of biblical principles. Those programs are based off of the same thing that God is discussing here in Hebrews of that Jesus is the one that is up ahead on the path. He has walked through the very same challenges that you and I have walked through, and that gives him special understanding to call us out on our lies and our misrepresentations and our insincerity. And that is by God's plan. So taking these two passages of don't mess with God because he sees it all, and you can stop with all that bluster because your your sponsor, your counselor, your your savior has walked these same paths. I hope you will grasp and and choose to live a life of sincerity, a life of integrity, and drop all the the other stuff. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you, Lord. We thank you, Lord, for calling us out on all of our lives, for reminding us that there is nothing that we can, can do in, in, in darkness that you can't see. There's no place for us to hide. We are fully exposed before you. Lord, forgive us for trying to get over on you. We've become too successful in, in getting others to invest in us, others to, to fulfill our needs. And it's become quite the sport, Lord. And 
we're only doing what we've seen others do and what we witness in the world and what's poured into us each and every day, Lord. But you call us to a higher standard, Lord. You, you open our eyes to reality, the reality that no one gets away from judgment. No matter how great a liar one becomes, <laughs> they still have to meet up with you. Cleanse us of all of our, our worldly ways, Lord, and help us to remain on target. We thank you, Lord, for Jesus who goes before us and calls us out on all of our garbage. Today is the day that we live a life that glorifies you. We let go of all the games and all of the hustles and choose you. For your glory and honor in Jesus' name, amen. All right, we're going to wrap things up. As promised, tomorrow, special passage that's coming from Hebrews 6 that really impacted uh, and helped kind of refresh my thinking, and I hope it does the same for you. Till then, know that I love you and I miss you. And please, for your sake, be good. <laughs>